And we're back, folks, right here in WrestleRant. I'm Graham GSM Matthews, and here on the show, I break down all the pay-per-views that I watch on the WWE Network, and going forward, we're going to be reviewing every installment in Armageddon history. So I've been doing WrestleRant for about, I mean, we've been doing it for over five years, but by this point, we've been doing it for about two and a half years, pay-per-view reviewing, and I've talked about No Mercy, I've talked about Unforgiven, Backlash, SummerSlam, every Big Four pay-per-view, every installment of every Big Four pay-per-view up to this point. Um, with the exception of Armageddon, for whatever reason, just in past years, we were either reviewing TLCs, uh, Royal Rumbles, so on and so forth. So we're finally getting around to the Armageddon pay-per-views this year. And I'm looking forward to watching and The 99 show was actually a lot better than I thought it would be. And as you guys know from listening to these reviews from years past and whatever, I'm just not a huge fan of the Attitude Era pay-per-views. Not that they're bad. They're just not my personal cup of tea because I'm just kind of a more wrestling-oriented guy. And obviously the 97, 98, 99 shows don't have that exceptional wrestling that we would see in 2000 and beyond. But still... From a storyline entertainment standpoint, I think the show is pretty good. So, like I said, moving forward, the Armageddon pay-per-view starting today with the 99 installment. So, kicking off the show, a tag team battle royal to determine the number one contenders to the WWF tag team titles at the Royal Rumble. The battle royal combatants included the Mean Street Posse, Mark Henry and the Godfather, the Headbangers, Too Cool, Edging Christian, the Hardy Boys, the Acolytes, and the Dudley Boys. Uh, the match was kind of was what it was. Wrong finish. I thought the Hardy Boys should have won just because they were easily the most over team in this entire battle royal. Yet the APA won for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, the match itself was all right. But if anything, more than anything else, I thought it was a, a big reminder as to how stacked the tag team division was back in late 99. I mean, you look at these tag teams, some more credible than others. But three, you know, the, the cornerstones of tag team wrestling during that time period in Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, and the Dudley Boys as well. But you also had two cool in there. The Headbangers, who recently made a comeback to WWE. Main Street Posse. The APA. Henry and the Godfather. Too cool. So a lot of good tag teams going on in the uh, on the tag team scene late in, in late 1999. After that, we had Kurt Angle versus Steve Blackman. An alright match. Angle wins. Kind of further his momentum from his debut at Survivor Series. Nothing really much more to the match other than that. But a good win for Angle. Nevertheless, uh, after that, a four corners evening gown pool match. With the fabulous Moolah and Mae Young as the special guest referees with the Women's Championship on the line. So, a complete train wreck of a match. And exactly what you would expect from the women around this period in time in late 99. Just uh, puppies and bras and panties, all that kind of shit galore. If you like that kind of stuff, you'll love the match. The match only went 2-3 minutes, but... Um, just absolute garbage match, but, I mean, if you love that kind of stuff with women stripping from their clothing, that's exactly what this match is. Uh, Miss Kitty V. Ivory, the then champion, Jacqueline and BB, or Phoebe, whatever. Um, do, what, do they say Phoebe? I thought they said Phoebe during the show, but it says BB here, I don't know. Anyway, so the match was what it was. Miss Kitty wins, becomes the new women's champion, uh... You know, flashes or tits anyway, and, and for the camera. I don't know if it was a botch, if it was scripted or whatever. Sergeant Slaughter quickly ties her up. I read a report immediately after uh, watching the pay per view because I was kind of interested to see if it was scripted, if it was a botch or not a botch, if she did it on purpose, despite what the officials told her. From what I read, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that there was supposed to be a camera angle from the back filming her taking off her top, but I guess. It, they accidentally got one from the front, and they got it on TV instead. Obviously, on the network version, it's blurred out, of course. Um, but I don't know what the whole deal with that was. She was off TV for a few more months. She did it again at Insurrection a couple months later, so I'm not exactly sure what the whole deal with that was. So anyway, um, the Holly is taking on Rikishi and Visera, uh, Visera sorry, uh, a pretty throwaway tag team match. Hardcore Holly and Crash Holly win. Rikishi and uh, Visera tease tension afterwards. Whatever. Val Venus beating the British Bulldog and D'Lo Brown in a triple threat match to win the European Championship. Fun at some certain parts, but just an absolute train wreck of a match with just spot after spot. But just not a real flowing sequence of spots, if that makes sense. Just kind of spot, 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 you know, kind of a garbage triple threat match. And the title meant nothing at that point anyway, so it's not like it really mattered. Uh, Val Venus, the new champion, like I said. After that, our first really good match of the night, Kane versus X-Pac in a steel cage match. These two had been going at it for months with Tori, you know, Kane's first and then girlfriend. Uh, not on the line, but she played a, she was kind of the crux of the storyline around this period in time. These two had a really, really good match. Again, maybe on any other night just because of the match. It, it was a good match, but I thought what made it better was the story going into it. They only got about eight minutes for a steel cage match, so I thought, one, it should have been positioned higher in the card. Uh, two, 
They should have gotten more time. But other than that, it was still a really good match. Kane wins. After that, for the Intercontinental Championship, Chris Jericho beating China to score his first ever Intercontinental Championship in WWE. And what was actually a really good match, um, which really should come as no surprise, just because China, she could work with the guys. She really didn't look at a place in the ring with guys like Kurt Angle and Triple H and Chris Jericho and the feud they had. It made no s I mean, not that it made no sense, but I just thought it was weird to have Jericho... And that was months earlier, but just have this really hot debut in early August 1999, only to kind of fall off the face of the earth, not do much in the remaining months, only to, uh, I mean, he finally got around to the Intercontinental Championship picture, which was good, but I really thought they should have done more with him around that period in time. But still, he's a new Intercontinental Champion, so a good win for him, and the crowd went crazy when he won the belt. Uh, after that, for the tag team titles, the Rock and Sock Connection contended with the gold against the New Age Outlaws, Billy Gunn, and Road Dog. A good match. The Rock and Mankind were just so freaking over as uh, as baby faces as a tag team that the crowd went nuts for him. It was a good match. Otherwise, you can't really get a great match more often than not out of the New Age Outlaws. But it was what it was. Uh, Rock and Sock Connection won via DQ after interference from Al Snow, which apparently I read was supposed to lead to a feud between Rock and Al Snow, but it never really came to surface for whatever reason. And I'm glad it did. And Al Snow really wasn't really didn't have much to benefit from a from a feud with The Rock. I mean, I don't really think it would have accomplished much. I don't think Al Snow was uh, ever going to get a, beyond a certain level in the WWE. It probably would have been along the same lines as Rock's programs with Billy Gunn and uh, British Bulldog, which also went nowhere and elevated neither guy. Um, but still a fun tag team match despite the non-finish, which I guess kind of kept the feud alive. After that, for the WWE Championship, Big Show squashing Big Bossman in three freaking minutes to retain the title. And this was the feud where Big Bossman made fun of Big Show's dead father, who had been dead for years, by the way. Big Show talked about this in his documentary, but the whole um, he croaked thing and going to the funeral home and taking the or the casket, rather. Um, all that stuff was great. It's obviously some of the most memorable segments around that period of time in the Attitude Era, but the match was shit. It was three minutes long. Not to say that it would have been any better if it was five to eight minutes long, but... For a WWE title match, it really made no sense to put the championship on Big Show just for that reason. Uh, so a garbage match, no one cared about it. It, re it was really over before it ever really began. Um, so I thought just putting the belt on Big Show for that reason alone was garbage. I don't know why they just didn't keep the championship on Triple H at that point, but whatever. Uh, the main event, Triple H taking on Mr. McMahon in the no-holds-barred match. And just a really fun brawl. Again, I mean... If you're looking for a standard no holds barred extreme wrestling kind of death wrestling match or a technical wrestling match, this might not be your forte or your cup of tea. Um, but if you watch most main event matches from '99 or just matches from '99 period, you'll get the style of the match. You'll understand the pace, and I thought they did a good job of just that. Triple H and Vince had a great feud going on around on around this time with Triple H, you know, marrying Stephanie while she was drunk or you know uh, knocked out, whatever. And the whole chapel scene again, one of the most memorable segments slash angles around that period of time in the Attitude Era, which went, really went off without a hitch, pun intended. Uh -huh. But Vince McMahon played his role here very well as well. He kind of stood a chance of beating Triple H at certain points. I was glad he looked like an equal and this wasn't a glorified squash. So we did get in his fair share of spots here throughout the bout. So uh, really good stuff, really solid ending. I thought the ending, uh, a really solid match. I thought the ending was really good. Stephanie was seated at ringside throughout the entire thing. Triple H making her endure all this pain by watching her, uh, just watching him beat the shit out of her father. And then she jumps the guardrail as Vince is Triple H in the corner with the uh, sledgehammer in hand. She takes a sledgehammer from her father. Is about to strike Triple H with it. Triple H takes it from her. He strikes Vince, pins Vince to score the victory. Then afterwards, before he can strike Stephanie, they make out and reveal that they were uh, in cahoots the entire time. So a great swerve that kicked off a relationship that's still intact to this day on WWE TV, which is absolutely amazing. Would later lead to them getting married even in real life. So I think by that point they were dating, I think, in real life, or they maybe they started the on-air relationship first, and then they started dating. I forgot which came first, uh, the egg or the chicken, whatever. But uh, anyway, so still a great swerve, though, and a great way of going off the show with a really solid main event. It seems like more often than not these 99 pay-per-views kind of end with a with a shitty finish or interference or a DQ or just not good wrestling. Uh, that was not the case with this show. That it was a really good main event to a pretty pleasantly surprising show. Not a home run of a show, but I thought if anything, it was a nice prelude to what when you know to what would later become the year of 2000. Only months later, this was the final, I believe, pay per view of the year '99 in Armageddon, or rather, December of 1999, leading into a just stacked year of 2000 with some great wrestling. 
uh, in just the weeks ahead. So really good, uh, kind of an introduction to the year of 2000 in WWE. So again, overall, a good show, or at least better than most shows from what I've seen from 1999. The main event I thought was good. Uh, the tag team title match was good. Jericho and Shine, a good match. Kane and Xbox, good match. So at least most of the main event matches, uh, with the obvious exception being Big Bossman versus Big Show, delivered here, and some really good main event wrestling matches. The undercard was kind of shit, but at least the main event matches delivered, and that was really all that mattered to me. So check it out at your leisure, specifically if you are a fan of the Attitude Era content and or the year of 1999 in WWE. And then coming up next week, or rather my next video, I will be reviewing the 2000 installment, speaking in 2000, the 2000 installment of Armageddon before moving on to 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, and 08. Obviously there is no 01 installment. For whatever reason, they did not do one that year. Um, I think because they did Vengeance in December of 2001, which I talked about a few months ago. But uh, yeah, we will be talking about every Armageddon pay-per-view in the week's head, which I'm very looking for, very much looking forward to watching and reviewing with you guys right here on WrestleRant. So at any rate, guys, as always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. All support is amazingly appreciated. I'll be uh, right back here in my next video to review Armageddon 2000. And until then, have a great rest of your week or weekend, whatever it might be. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.